So, dear students, we are starting with the first step that is preparation of standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate. So, this is your weighing bottle with salt and this is our digital balance. We are setting it to zero before you take up the weight and then check your weight. It is around 5.85 grams. So, let us record in your manual WR equals to weight of salt along with the weighing bottle. It is 5.85 grams and then transfer this salt into the standard flask. This is called standard flask because you have to prepare a standard solution of 100 ml. You have a marking here and transfer the salt with the help of a funnel slowly. Transfer the salt into the funnel and then take the weight of the empty weighing bottle. Now let us take the weight of the empty weighing bottle. It is recorded as 4.23 grams. So weight of the empty bottle is 4. 2, 3 grams. Now you have to take the weight of the salt by taking the difference between W1 and W2 then the normality calculation is done. Right? Now let us see how to prepare the standard solution. You see that you have small specks of salt inside the funnel. Add distilled water slowly. Let it dissolve. See to it that you are completely transferring the salt with the help of funnel and then let it dissolve a bit add little more distilled water while you are preparing the standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate ferrous get hydrolyzed to ferrous hydroxide so to avoid this precipitation we can add roughly around 10 to 15 ml of dilute sulfuric acid or you can add 3 to 4 drops of concentrated sulfuric acid to avoid the formation of ferrous hydroxide. So I am adding 2-3 to three drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. You have to be very careful while handling these chemicals, particularly the strong acids. So for you, we will be providing with uh, dilute acids. So I have added 3-4 to four drops of concentrated sulfuric acid. Now, make the solution up to the mark with the distilled water using the wash bottle. See to it that you are not crossing the mark. The last few drops of water may exceed the mark. So let us use pipette for making the solution exactly up to the mark. So I'm using pipette to pipette out few drops of the water. This is our pipette. Pipette also you have a marking. So let us pipette out and let us transfer the distilled water through the pipette up to the mark. Slowly you transfer. So this is how you slowly transfer and make it up to mark. You should uh, see the lower meniscus. So one or two drops. Yes. So we'll stop here. So we have prepared the standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate using distilled water. I'll repeat again. The first step involves weighing of salt with the weighing bottle i mean you will be given with the salt along with the weighing bottle then you record w1 and after transferring the salt into the standard flask you record w2 and uh, you slowly transfer the salt with the help of funnel then add little distilled water and add few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid to prevent the formation of ferrous hydroxide and then make it up to mark with distilled water shake thoroughly for uniform distribution of salt if you don't shake thoroughly the more concentrated part will be left at the bottom and you have low concentration of ferrous ions on the top. So you should shake it thoroughly and then fill the burette with the potassium permanganate solution. So first step involves preparation of standard solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate. There involves normality calculation and then normality you know it is the difference in the weights of the salt before transferring and after transferring the salt and then 
taking the gram equivalent weight difference in salt by gram equivalent weight in one liter of solution so here we are taking 100 ml of solution so that calculation will be shown here after the uh, demonstration is performed now the second part is standardization of potassium permanganate what is this uh, uh, standardization of potassium permanganate potassium permanganate the solution which is to be filled in the burette is not known to you so you have to find out the normality you have to find out the concentration of the potassium permanganate and uh, using uh, law of normalities that is you have to go for titration method this is volumetric titration volumetric quantitative titration which involves titrant which is to be taken in the burette and titrant this is called titrant the solution to be estimated in the conical flask so we are taking a 250 ml conical flask and then slowly transfer 20 ml because the capacity of this pipette is 20 ml 20 ml of standard ferrous ammonium sulfate solution into the conical flask so in this step of standardization we are taking 20 transferring 20 ml of standard ferrous ammonium sulfate solution into the conical flask then add roughly 20 ml of dilute sulfuric acid because dilute sulfuric acid provides acidic medium to liberate nascent oxygen in the uh, principle which is explained to you for you before the demonstration the nascent oxygen is released by sulfuric acid in presence of sulfuric acid potassium permanganate releases nascent oxygen and this nascent oxygen oxidizes the ferrous ions present in the test solution to ferric ions so potassium permanganate actually it is an example of redox titration where potassium permanganate acts as oxidizing agent and ferrous ammonium sulfate acts as reducing agent now at the end point what is the color change observed let us see in the demonstration so what is end point the point at which the concentration of solutions taken in the burette as well as in the conical flask become equal by using law of normalities we equalize these concentrations where n1 v1 equals to n2 v2 right so let us pip it out 20 ml of this solution into a clean conical flask So it is dilute acid, we be a bit careful, I have to put a 20 ml of ferrous ammonium sulphate solution into the conical flask. Use your index finger to release the solution, not the thumb finger because thumb finger involves a lot of pressure. So use index finger. Now add 20 ml, roughly 20 ml of dilute sulphuric acid. Now you can go for titration with potassium permanganate solution. There is no indicator required for this uh, permanganometric titration because potassium permanganate is a self-indicator. Okay, right? mm. So while doing this titration, you have to hold your left hand like this and your thumb finger should be on the nozzle. So keep titrating, add drop by drop and observe the color change. When is the end point? So it is from colorless to pale pink. Once you get pale pink, it is the end of the titration. See to it that the solution is not touching the walls of the glass container, the conical flask. You should be very careful in the addition of last drop. first step you need some patience because you don't know where is the end point exactly so when it is nearing pale pink just stop your titration
can stop the titration you can observe the pale pink color this is the end point so this is the point at which the redox titration is completed so here it is coming around 15.8 ml so for colored solutions you have to check the lower meniscus and uh, upper meniscus and I'm sorry for colorless solutions you have to check the lower meniscus for colored solutions you have to check the upper meniscus so it's coming around 15.8 so our uh, standardization of permanganate solution you have a tabular column the volume of standard ferrous solution which you have prepared is 20 ml the initial reading is 0 and the final reading is 16.8 ml so net is nothing but final minus initial so it is again 16.8 ml you can start your second titration from where you stopped or you can refill the burette so you have to perform two such titrations to get concurrent if you're not getting concurrent values go for the third titration then you have to calculate the normality of the potassium permanganate solution so this is the formula we apply n1 v1 equals to n2 v2 so n2 is normality of potassium permanganate solution n2 is given so now uh, we are going to part C. In part C, we are going to estimate the test solution, the amount of uh, iron present in the given test solution. We have already prepared the test solution. This is how it looks. So our lab assistant will provide you with uh, roughly around 8 or 10 ml of the test solution, depending upon the uh, concentration. We have different concentrations for different students. So this test solution will be given in the standard flask you have to collect the test solution on your own you go to him he will give you around 8 to 10 ml of the test solution then to the test solution add distilled water using the wash bottle and make it up to mark i have already added the distilled water and made the solution up to the mark with the distilled water only in this step you don't need to add any dilute sulfuric acid because by preparing that standard so, uh, uh, the test solution we will add dilute sulfuric acid so in part c just pip it out 20 ml of your given test solution make it up to mark here with the distal water shake thoroughly for uniform concentration pipette out 20 ml of this into the clean conical flask i have already pipetted and collected 20 ml in the conical flask now as we have done in part b you have to transfer around 20 ml of the dilute sulfuric acid into the clean conical flask which is filled with the 20 ml of test solution then start titrating with the standard potassium permanganate filled in the burette so as i told you you have to remember the colorless solutions you have checked the upper meniscus and the colorless solutions you have to check the lower meniscus so now start titrating this is our test solution so check for the pale pink color so it, it will turn from colorless to pale pink color Observe the color change. See to it, it doesn't touch the walls of the conical flask. As potassium permanganate is self indicator, you don't need to add an external indicator. When all the ferrous ions are completely oxidized to ferric ions, the next drop of addition of this potassium permanganate into the conical flask will turn to pale pink color, indicating no more ferrous ions are present in your test solution. So once it turns pale pink, your titration is complete. So add drop by drop and check the color. So it's still oxidizing ferrous ions, potassium permanganate. And uh, finally when it turns pale pink, the ferrous ions are completely oxidized to ferric ions. So you can stop your titration there.
are almost nearing the end point. This is our final pale permanent pale pink color. So this you record the reading. It is exactly coming at 15. So you are you have a third table estimation of part C. How many titrations you are doing? We are writing the number one. Volume of test solution is 20 ml and initial reading we have taken as zero and final reading as you observed it is exactly 15 ml. So you have to repeat this titration twice till you get concurrent readings. Concurrent in the sense same readings. If they are not same, go for third reading. So the second and third reading would be same. After that, you have to calculate the normality of test solution followed by the amount of iron present in the given test solution. That is the aim of our experiment. 